went to the studio uh, yesterday uh, to get a couple of things, and I came across in a box the remains of a sculpture I did a, uh, a few years back. Uh, it was of a mountain man on horseback, and he had just traded or a, a beaver pelts for a brand new Hawkins rifle, which he had across the saddle. I and this is the rifle shot of the rifle. same man, and. Um, scaled the skull again to the eight and a half inch and that gives me the distance between the, the shoulder blades and the shape of the shoulder blades so that uh, when I start sculpting this I, I've got everything scaled. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you you know how to plot out the arms for the uh, armature. I'm just a uh, Drawing a black line to the wrists, this way I'm not wasting a lot of my uh, armature material. Uh, just to where the uh, middle of the thing is, and then go up. I'm still following the same, the width of the yeah, so a uh, full armature uh, for the uh, man. At, you know, developing the thickness of the thorax, and I'm going more by eye than getting anal and taking every measurement. Uh, everybody's different. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm flattening out a piece of clay to make some skin. The clay won't stick to this tool, so I can just go over this and, and blend it in. The, the key is to make the, the, uh, the skin thin. One of the tools I use is a uh, pasta machine. It's just a simple kitchen, everyday kitchen pasta machine. All right, I've put, put the uh, clay on the shirt, or on the uh, bottom part of the uh, strap that holds the shot pouch. And now working from the bottom up, I uh, Start moving these little cut pieces of clay into position. Your time is valuable if you spend a lot of time messing around with little fine details that will never show up. It's just a waste of your time. I'm going to uh, take this uh, strap off that I put on and work so hard on and put it from this side going down here because. Uh, this blanket will cover the pouch, and I don't want to cover the pouch. All right. Clay, where the uh, clay did not adhere to the cloth. Thus, uh, making it a lot easier to do I'm it just now. establishing the uh, position of hair and... Uh, eye sockets, the bottom of the nose, and the mouth. Going through the full process of giving them a mouth and lips and all that is, well, it's defeated by the fact that you're putting a beard on him. It's very delicate work because his eyes are looking in a certain direction. I want to give him a little personality. I'm going to raise his eyebrow just a little bit. Sort of like he's looking up. So as you can see, I've done his face and I've attached it in here right back onto his head. You'll have fun sculpting. Just play with your clay. Uh, do whatever you want to do. Western, modern, contemporary, nudes, non-nudes, uh, mystical creatures, uh, Conan the Barbarian type characters. Whatever you do, just have fun. That's the key to being a sculptor, is enjoying what you do. Learn uh, how to throw pots in, in a ceramics class in my 12th year of high school, and uh, I couldn't throw pots to save my neck. My, I was all fingers. And uh, so down through the years, I've taught myself how to sculpt. I'm going to try to pass on to you uh, in these videos that I'm going to be producing. Uh, a little bit about uh, how uh, I do my uh, work and uh, create uh, things like uh, this face here that uh, I made oh years ago 
it was, it's all that's left of a life-size, or larger than life-size, uh, clay I did of a cowboy. All right, uh, from Armature to Clay on this uh, first DVD that I produced. Uh, it's uh, a DVD that I produced uh, showing how to sculpt a male bust in clay. And here I'm showing how to make the armature, the first clay, uh, taking proportions and making, making adjustments and stuff like that, and then starting into the portrait itself. Uh, what I'm trying to do on this video that I'm sharing with you today are my five videos that I currently have out. And this was the first one that I produced. Uh, I start with a skull, I, I add the muscles to the skull, uh, then I just, uh, you know, at the end of the video I, I kind of have fun with the, uh, the face. Uh, this is going to be a new video on uh, using a true form armature, the uh, life size bust. And uh, I'll tell you how big this is. From uh, the base to the top of the head is uh, just about 25 and a half inches tall. And this video here, I take a true form armature uh, from trueformarmatures.com uh, and I. Uh, start adding clay to it to show you how you can utilize this wonderful tool, this uh, this uh, armature that's uh, foam and, and resin and stuff like that. Uh, to, to make a portrait I'm making of uh, a guy by the name of Henry Roman Nose, who was a Southern Cheyenne uh, warrior and chief. And uh, so through this whole thing I show you measurements, how to uh, block in things, even using uh, plastic knives to, to line up uh, the width of the shoulders and uh, so I just uh, enjoyed the heck out of creating this piece and after I was done with this video I actually uh, uh, expanded on the piece a little bit, took away a little bit, added a little bit and changed it a little bit but basically it is a portrait of uh, Chief Roman Nose and uh, I show how to lay out the muscles, I show how to make uh, the hair, how to fill in uh, behind the hair so you don't use all that much clay doing it and all that's in the video itself and uh, I'm not going to show you here you have to buy the video if you want to see that part all right this is a true form armature and it's the uh, 24 inch tall I'm going to sculpt the female figure first uh, without clothes. I'm going to get the under body first before I start putting the clothes on. This uh, video covers about uh, six months of sculpting on this piece from start to finish to the uh, bronze. Uh, here I am starting the uh, head and that clay head in the background is uh, a clay that I'd done, had done years ago of Sacagawea and I just wanted to uh, use it as a model for her face. Uh, here I show you how to uh, put the head back on the body and then I start uh, positioning the, uh, the figure. And this whole idea for this piece came from one pose that I took of a uh, young uh, lady who lives over in Virginia City, uh, a daughter of a friend of mine. And um, I show you how to put the clay on, how to build the under uh, surface that goes below the clay or the uh, dress. Uh, here I'm showing how to make a uh, fringe and I try to show you how to do all these things so it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg when you cast it. It's still going to cost you a lot because bronze casting is inherently very expensive. But I'm taking my 38 going on 39 years of sculpting uh, and trying to pass it on to you through these videos. Um, here I am uh, just starting to add uh, clay so that I can put hanging fringe off her sleeve. Uh, you got to have stuff underneath the fringe and here I'm working on the face trying to personalize it a little bit. And the, the face is pretty much coming out of my head but I'm also using photographs of uh, young Indian wet ladies to uh, do the face. And uh, braiding hair, doing the hair. And then I uh, end up in a gallery in Tahoe. Um, at the end of creating of this piece uh, last uh, summer and um, 
I finished up the clay at the at the uh, gallery actually. Uh, here I'm laying down the bead uh, uh, p uh, thing that's going to go on there, and then I'm putting in the pattern of the Cheyenne uh, beadwork, which is rather complicated. And I'm also working on the face and finishing up things, like adding uh, an earring here and an earring on the other side. And then at the final part of this, this DVD, uh, these are all separate DVDs, by the way. Uh, I show you the original bronze. Uh, this is the actual color of bronze once it's cast and sandblasted. It's actually a white metal that uh, you can polish up, make it look like brass. And then here the uh, guy at the foundry was putting on the patina, which is done with acid and, and heat. And this is the final bronze. All right, uh, this is the first day of a new instructional video that I'm going to be making. And this one will involve the making of a horse's head. And this uh, shows a, a skull that uh, was sent to me by a friend up in Oregon. Uh, I use it to uh, help me uh, whenever I sculpt a horse's head because uh, the skull is very important to the shape of the face and, uh, and the structure of the face. And I show that in this video. Here I am uh, adding clay to the uh, the horse and uh, you know, the armature that I made, and I show you how to make the armature and and all that. I even tell you how much clay uh, I put uh, it took to do this, so that you can plan yourself, uh, plan your own uh, little horse bust, you might say. It's it's very important to get the little nuances on the uh, skull. Here I'm adding the first muscles uh, at the nose of the skull. Uh, the mouth here, I've already added the uh, two tubes for the the, the nose. And uh, now I'm working on the uh, neck of the horse. Uh, believe me, this is uh, really condensed. This, uh, all these videos are well over an hour. This one, I don't remember how long it is, but I think it was probably an hour and 15 minutes, hour and 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, all the videos are over an hour long. And here I'm just starting to lay the... Uh, uh, mane on the horse and showing how to uh, make it look like hair instead of tubes of clay. Again, uh, it, it's oh here I am uh, putting here the copyright. Here we are, and that's what it took to do this piece with six pounds of clay. I hope you've enjoyed this DVD. I've enjoyed bringing it to you. feet and stuff like that. Everything comes apart. Uh, well, you can take the uh, rib cage off and work on the upper part or, or adjust the, the height of your... All right, this is my uh, fifth and last DVD. Um, not necessarily in the order it was made, but uh, again, I'm, I'm creating here a... Uh, Baby uh, being held by a mother, uh, Sacagawea. Uh, Sacagawea, if you didn't know, is a historical figure from the Old West. Um, here I start putting the clay on the uh, armature. It's an 18-inch armature here, and that's why uh, it doesn't have uh, the bones in the arm because uh, it's, it's too small for that. Uh, it does have the leg bones. That's nice. Here I'm showing the, uh, the uh, positioning of the hips and the shoulders and starting to add the muscles and the legs. Now, because she's going to have clothes on, I don't worry too much about every nuance uh, of tendon and muscle because it's going to be mostly covered by clay anyway. This was the first positioning of the baby that I came up with, and uh, after running into a lady in a restaurant, I decided to change that because she was holding her baby a completely different way, and uh, I took pictures of her with my iPhone and uh, came up with a better design than I started out with. Uh, here I'm using a, a Native American lady's face from the movie uh, Black Robes uh, from years ago. Uh, here's the uh, new positioning of the baby, and I'm just uh, adjusting things and trying to make it look uh, motherly and loving and uh, by bringing the two heads of the, of the uh, baby and the mother together. And this is the uh, idea for the blanket that I'm going to have around her. It, it was taken by photograph 
of a lady at a mountain man rendezvous and uh here I'm working on the baby's face, which is not easy. I hate doing baby's faces. They're very hard, very unadult. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to show you uh, all five of these DVDs in one video so that uh, you aren't going here and there to find a video of uh, my DVDs. These are the current ones that I have available as of December, I mean January 10th, 2014. Um, next week, I will be starting a uh, hopefully starting a horse uh, DVD where I'm doing the full body of the, the, the horse. So at the end of this uh, video, I kind of like uh, the way this one turned out and I kind of hope you enjoyed watching these. So if you're interested in buying one of these DVDs or all five of them, uh, just follow the instructions below this video in the video description. Thank you for watching.